This is the LEGO 21344 Orient Express that LEGO sent to us for review. And yes, quite frankly, it almost doesn't fit on my pretty long desk. Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hi everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Brick, this is Mike. On the desk we have 2540 pieces, $300 price tag launching on December 1st, 2023, 8 minifigures and a whole lot of history. This set, the Orient Express, was made to commemorate the 140th anniversary of the first journey of the train that happened in 1883 from Paris to Vienna and also it is to commemorate the comeback of the Orient Express in the form you're seeing in this set, the dark blue with golden elements, in 2024, yes, they are bringing back the legendary train. In the box you will find 23 numbered bags, a hefty manual with the train's graphic from front to back page, lots of snippets in the manual from the history of the train, I like that, that they kind of commemorate the destinations or the stopping stations of the train, and of course words from the designers and your fan designer that made the LEGO Ideas project happen. As many have already noticed, the train differs quite a lot from the original idea submission by designer Thomas. And that can spark a whole new conversation asking how much the original submissions should actually differ from the finished design. At 46 inches there is a massive set. The train track length uh, will require a long shelf for sure, at this uh, length it's only an inch shorter than the massive Hogwarts Express. But given the different scale, of course, the Hogwarts Express is much bigger. In this one, you are able to get an extra carriage to keep the train longer. Unfortunately, the set is not motorized. At this price point, I believe it should come with the power and the battery box and all that jazz, just like in the Lighthouse, which was considered a little bit of an expensive side of a set, but at the same time, it offered a complete package. In this case, we only have a very hefty display model. Significant amount of bricks goes to the train tracks. They are a bit repetitive to build, but it's a fast process. You're basically done in the first few bags. It is a long piece, not easy to transport as it can snap in half. And you could ask, maybe LEGO could have used the actual LEGO train tracks because they seem to be compatible considering the spread of the wheels. The track does bend a little due to the difference in clutch power, so you may need to push it down a little bit here and there to keep it as straight as possible. Nice thing is that there is a clear brick on the track holding the train in place so it won't slide off. It just holds the last uh, two bricks on the back of the train. On top of the track the set includes the locomotive, the tender car, the sleeper car and of course the luxurious Orient Express restaurant car. The dark blue tone with golden and black elements works great for the train. Uh, there is a nice balance between stickers and printed pieces in favor of printed. Like you can see on the locomotive the stripes are printed actually, the 52 which is I believe the idea's set number, and the Sapphire Star, which is the homage to the Emerald Knight, are stickers. They work well, but they're still stickers. And for example, on the carriages, the sticker on the door, well, that's a sticker, and all the everything else, basically the destinations, and the Orient Express logo, plus the French markings on the train, plus the set number, as the carriage number, which is nice, are all printed bricks. So that's nice. The wheel assemblies rotate so that the train can accommodate curved tracks. The roofs are holding 64 grey 2x2 curved slopes all together. The train elements connect easily thanks to the ball joint connectors and there's even a handle brake so you can hold them while connecting for easier assembly. The locomotive and the tender are my favorite parts of the set. They are fun to build, especially the locomotive. The tender has some great design elements and they just look great. Again with that sapphire star sticker, it's a great homage to the Emerald Knight. There are some incredible part usages on the locomotive. The dark blue minifigure minion heads at the top, golden pens for the train whistle, dark blue minifig positioning pieces for those tanks on the side, wooden Harry Potter wand chests for those blocks inside, an old school telephone handle on the side of the locomotive, gold crowbar works great as the main lever in the engine room, and this great corner dome piece that is used here, used also in the other parts of the set later on. The wheels of the locomotive roll and work and these new silver coupling pieces are brand new, designed specifically for this set. I also really like how these railings were designed, basically a pole piece put into this 1x1 modified sideways so that creates a continuous design. The front also has some great assembly with a lot of inverting bricks techniques used here and it works to great effect. Overall the locomotive is fantastic, you're gonna love building it, it looks great and same can be said about the tender car. The tender car in fact is a storage space, the coal on the top is a fake trapdoor, so you can store things inside, a minifigure fits or two or three 
or something you would just like to hide in a Lego set. I'm taking this apart so you can see how it's built. There is a very interesting piece for that panel used here. First time I've ever seen it. It all makes for a great, studless, very sleek design. There are some studs for, of course, in the front, but looking from afar, you can almost tell it's not a Lego set. You can trick some people into believing that. Plus, I really like the addition of the small wooden door for the access to the call by the train driver, and some of these panels actually move, so you can adjust the angle here. Now onto the carriages, they are a little repetitive in design since the exteriors are exactly the same and only the interiors differ. The assembly of the windows is very satisfying, they in fact have a new piece here, a 1x1 T-bracket, which is great for future use. And also I recommend when building this set, just snap the windows into place after you place them onto the train, it just goes faster and is easier to do. The roofs are also sporting fake lights for the interior with the inverted domes, and I believe there is actually a uh, typo in Bucharesti, I believe some of the people that speak the language notice that it's spelled wrong. Fun fact. There are some notable stickers in the backs and fronts of the trains in the form of these rustic decorations. They look nice and capture the style of the set from the era. And in the back of the restaurant car you have this cute rear train light. Now let's get into the interior starting with the restaurant car. The rustic design stickers are also in the inside of the train. We have two dining tables with great assemblies, love the lamps especially, using the red cupcake pieces. Those are great and also left and right sort of assemblies for these dark green chairs. Each table has the lamp, the plate, a tea cup, a glass for martini and another plate. On the other side of the restaurant car there is a bar with the sitting stool right there. There's another martini. So maybe James Bond was here. There's a piece of lime there, a cup, cup of tea as well, so serving tea, that's where the waitress can serve. Uh, also there is a small bar area with nice uh, glass with some fine drink. And something that's uh, I think the highlight of this interior is this beautiful reflective cut mirror sticker with some dove or bird element from Lego and grapes. So Legoified to its finest. The bar area also has a mirror right behind the bottles, which is kind of hard to see, but it's a nice touch. The mirror also has some ornament designs on its edges to make for even more luxurious look. The sleeping car interior is even more packed, divided into two sections, the sleeping room with bunk beds and some other elements, we're gonna get into that, and a apartment or a suit for the uh, diva, uh, I guess traveling on the train. She has full bed, full restroom, all the goodness. To look at the restroom I removed the windows, I'm gonna remove also that rustic wooden wall, just look at that little assembly, very cool. Uh, inside we have a sink using again those corner dome pieces which are fantastically working for that sink. Great use for the T piece in gold for the faucet, reflective mirror sticker as well on the walls, just like that assembly is as, uh, immaculate. Gotta tell you that the soap dish or the soap tray is right next to it with the towel using the door piece from a car that actually is used also by the waitress as her towel. On this side we have a small technic piece for the toilet paper. Brilliant and a luxurious toilet as well on the side of the wall. Pretty cool for a small stuff like that. And just look at that pattern on the floor using the flesh tone, the corner tiles and those fancy white tiles. One of the better patterns for a floor I've seen in quite a while. Next we have a fully working desk, the lamp makes a comeback with a cup of tea, a typewriter, super nice, that's printed by the way, uh, in a 1x2 cheese and a fine glass for some finer drink. And on the other side is a nice design for a light a tan couch. The bed at the end of the room is quite special, just look at that design with those corner half dome pieces. It just looks so flush and cozy, I love that. And the bed wall has two interesting things going on for it. Uh, the translucent opalescent gemstones, that's nice too, but that sticker, the round sticker on uh, the wall is basically a spherical mirror reflecting the interior of the apartment right back to it. That's great, really nice attention to detail on the luxurious Orient Express. The lower class section in the back has bunk beds. I'm gonna remove them, so I wanna show you something very interesting, so you can just remove that. Super simple something for the bunk beds. There's an extra paper, read all about it. It might be reference to something, maybe Agatha Christie related, Hercule Poirot, or something like that. But interesting part below the bed, the lower bunk bed, is this sapphire um, right there hidden. So it might be a reference to something Agatha Christie, or something I'm not sure what this means, it can be to the name of the locomotive, the Sapphire Star, something like that, but nevertheless, 
It's the most mysterious easter egg in the entire set, so let me know what you think this is. One more table with a lamp and a backgammon game right there on the sticker, so really nice addition here. And well, the folks traveling here do not have a full toilet, but they do have a hidden sink in the wall right there on this corner assembly and the door makes a comeback as a towel. 8 minifigs here are a whole package, you may find references if your imagination runs so to Agatha Christie, uh, there's a reference to Johnny Thunder in the form of uh, Pippin Reed as the reporter, just lots of goodness here, 8 might be a significant number but it's also it's not the most for the price of this set, it's still a nice selection here with crew and passengers alike. We have a captain here, I'm sorry, the train conductor, but he does have the captain's face. We have the train driver that is up to something, looking at his face expression, hopefully not murder. The waitress with a big old smile serving martini, shaken not stirred to James Bond. And the clever use of the door piece makes a comeback here. The concierge or the luggage guy carries some heavy luggages in his hands, looking at his face expression. Well, he does have more stuff to take, considering how much luggage the diva has. We have this studded trunk, yes, the trunk has studs on its lid, there's plenty of goodness here, she has some uh, jewels of the east here, there's the amber piece as well as some gems, jewels, whatnot, so she's definitely coming up from Istanbul, there's a small box with stickers from all over the world, there's a bunch of king's coins, so she might have visited the Lion Knight's castle right there, and there's an interesting tile printed here, the top secret over it so something uh, also Agatha Christie maybe I don't know I just wish the card had some jumper stud on it so that the trunk doesn't slide off it the diva as I call her is the most luxurious lady on the train I love her outfit she's the fa my favorite minifigure great print all around she gets a purse as well as the umbrella that color piece and a brand new hair mold as well she also gets uh, two face expressions as one of the only characters in the entire set. Here is Pippin Reed and people were speculating if that's actually her. Hey, it's stated in the manual, that's her. So no speculations anymore, it's in the manual. She gets a lovely print, a letter and a pen. So I'm not sure what that reference is to, but you can let me know. Great head mold, two face expressions. And well, she's definitely scared of something. My second favorite figure is the cameraman with a great build for the camera. I love it, love his outfit, the satchel, everything about him screams like he could film the Orient Express departure or, I don't know, the Titanic departure. And last but not least, we have the last passenger, the senior sort of passenger. He can be a reference to anything you want. He can be Hercule Poirot, he can be somebody else, he can be just, well, Santa traveling, because that's the Santa minifigure head. Anything you want, honestly, but he's just there. Maybe he's assisting uh, with solving some mystery. So there you have it. That's the Lego Orient Express for the first time ever. Is this a worthy successor of the Emerald Knight? Let me know. It's referencing that set from the past so heavily. Uh, any chance it gets with the Sapphire Star naming and just all, all of it. Another luxurious train in that scale in Lego form. It For some it can be a paperweight. It's not motorized. It's expensive. So I think at this price point it should be at least motorized. Looking at you, the lighthouse. That set came at a hefty price tag but had the whole package, you just turned it on and it worked uh, just fine. Here this set is compatible with the regular train tracks, so I'm not sure why LEGO didn't go for that. And I don't think there's an easy way to actually modify it to run. Maybe some other people doing like train mocks and stuff can elaborate on that. But on top of that you get good minifigures, excellent looks, it has so little studs it can be taken as a model train uh, and placed on a diorama, nobody will notice, actually it looks so good. A good balance between prints and stickers, which I was expecting at this price point. Well, I was expecting all to be prints, but some pieces are much easier to print than the others. And in this case, there is a hefty, nice chunk of printed pieces, which is nice. Uh, so, And the stickers are, are so well done that they don't actually distract way too much. And they work for the interior grade. There's just a lot of good looks, especially those mirror pieces in the interiors. Those cut mirrors, they look amazing. They, they, you feel the luxury in the interiors. I love the interior designs. As you as you saw in the review, I was really gushing over some of the choices of the builds uh, in those uh, restaurant and sleeper cars. Excellent overall. And some great imaginative minifigures there that can make your imagination run wild into what they're referencing to. Thank you so much for watching. It was Mike. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Leave a like, subscribe and leave a comment below. As always, I appreciate you all. Thanks for watching Beyond the Brick and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Goodbye.